But while we're throwing around, congratulations, dude. First win. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. <laughs> it's got to feel I'm, pretty good. I mean, yes. It just feels like um, the feeling I can explain was like, okay. You know, like, okay, we got that out the way. Exhale. Okay, we understand what it what it takes. We understand what losing feels like. We understand what winning feels like. We got a little thing going with the rotations a little bit. You know, guys are kind of selling their roles. You see, we're shooting the ball a little bit better every 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 game. Just a little bit better. Defense is still top five. We're getting better. That's what it has to be. Better. That's what it has to be. It's a long season, and sometimes people are really prisoner of the moment, and mm. they want to make a macro judgment on a micro piece of information. Mm -hmm. There's more information to come for the Lakers, and I'm sure it feels that way for you guys. I saw the celebration afterwards, and it seemed like it was pretty euphoric. It seemed like the vibes in the locker room were extraordinary. Water bath for Darvin Ham on his first win for the Lakers. No, no, I was fire. Um, obviously, you know, you don't, you know, in, any any time in life, you want to. I don't know what it says. It does something to the human body if you celebrate your wins because it forces the subconscious to uh, want to go out and get more smaller wins or you know hit hit smaller goals. So uh, yeah, I guess that was one of the moments we were in with that that vibe. I mean, he deserved that. He's, um, you know, you. You lose what what five in a row. You go you know one in five preseason. That's damn near two months of losing, a month of losing. You know what I'm saying? So like to put it in perspective, as like in basketball world, you know it feels like a month a uh, month and a half of losing. So uh, you know we got that got that hawk off our back, and uh, yeah, that shit felt good. Yeah, it, it it's interesting that you say that it was almost calculated for you guys to celebrate that there's some kind of science behind it or you're rewarding yourselves. No. Who's Whose like idea was it? Were you like, oh, coach is about to come back. Like we got to get him with the water. Like was it, was it somebody that sparked that or you guys all knew that that was the move? I think everybody kind of knew that was the move. Um, but man, we was, we was dumping some cold ass. I'm talking, you talking about like foot bath, cold water, ice cold water on his ass, you know? So like, you know, I don't know him the 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 him being frozen and shaking and, and mixed with the excitement, but no, nah, he deserved it all, man. He deserved it all. You could tell he uh he uh, he's put a lot of his like his 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 you know his work after his, his his heart. He put a lot of shit into this, so he uh, he deserves a moment like that for sure. You guys hit him with the mop bucket too, like you were ah, picking up the, the mop bucket. I I think yeah. so, someone almost smoked Austin Reeves in the face with the mop bucket. If you <laughs> break down the film, I think that he almost he almost got a cut over the eye. He was about nah, to be looking like Rocky. That. No, don't. Say <laughs> he was about don't to be swollen that. up. He no. he dodged it, but he looked like he was like you know he was in his fighter nah, stance. No, nah, that was a vibe. Yesterday was cool. It was cool. We deserved that though. We deserved that win. You definitely deserved it, and you talked about figuring out a little bit of the rotation, and Russ came off the bench, and yep. Russ had his best game of the season. He no. was selfless enough to come off the bench. He finished off with 17, 8, 8, was plus 18, his best plus minus of the season, best plus minus on the squad last night. What did you see from him behind closed doors as he was coming off the bench? I mean, ultimate, ultimate professional. I mean... It, it, in the name of basketball, in the, in the name of like the basketball game, it's not about like who who starts the game. It's all about who finishes. You understand? So, so, I mean, for him being with that second unit, it gives him a ton of space. Obviously, because they're you know they're super small, so it gives him a ton of space where he can he can kind of be him. You know, or obviously, you know, playing LeBron and AD, a lot of you know guys who have who have to have the ball. You know, for teams to be successful, it just want a lot to go around. So. Um, you know, Coach Ham and his coaching staff done a great job of communicating. You know, everything that you know, they they communicated with Russ and it wasn't like a a fight, like Russ just wanna win, bro. You know, that's all I that's all I take, you know, took since I've been here. And uh I mean, he's been playing his ass out, he's been hooping. You're talking about almost a triple double off the bench. That's 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 fucking impressive. That's impressive. It's very valid. So do you think that him having this bench role, but then you also won the game, does it make it easier for that to be a long-term solution or is it kind of a day-by-day, game-by-game type of thing? Nah, I mean, you never know with stuff like this, you know, uh, especially this long NBA season. 
Uh, health is always uh, up there, but, uh, you know, just the type of freedom he has. The ball, he has the ball all the time without, you know, uh, you know, LeBron AD out there gives, you know, gives anybody type of confidence, especially to do it and you win and to play the way he, he played. Like we're talking about 18, 8 and 8 and off the bench, you know. Uh, clutch free throws, some big time shots, some drives, some trays, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah, he deserves his money. He deserves his flowers because he's definitely been getting a lot of... Uh, yeah, what's the he's opposite of, of flowers? People. I don't you know, know what I mean? the opposite of flowers is, but they're giving it to him. Yeah, us. You know, not just him, but uh, they're giving it to us. But for him, you know, you know, to stay on rust, you know, they've been giving it to him a little bit more. So uh, it's good to see, you know, everybody kind of recognize that, you know, you know, my boy is still rust, not, not just, you know, some guy who's just, I don't know, in their mind all washed up. You said that they've been giving it to all of you. Has it felt like longer than, you know, the five games that it took for you guys to get a win? Did it weigh more on you? No. You know, because, you know, it's, I mean, you've been in this league. I've been in this league, I don't know what, in my 11th year, 14 years total professionally. So, uh, I, you know, I've been on. Every team I've been on has been a playoff team. And, you know, we go through a funk if you lose five, six in a row. I'm just I'm just happy and fortunate that this happened early. You know, I know in the middle, Minnesota Timberwolves, I think we were, I don't know, four and nine, and we lost like six six in a row or something like that, or four and five, and we lost like six in a row. And that felt like, that felt bad in Minnesota. It's cold outside. Just keep losing and keep losing and keep losing. You know, so that felt bad. Uh, so you can't take this game for granted. And Minnesota, we end up winning, you know, winning 51, 52 games in a season. So, uh, you know. Shit, sure. It's a, it's a long ass season, man. Seasons is hella long. Yeah, Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett this week they talked on their show on Showtime about how it takes like twenty five games to kind of figure out who you are as a team. Would you agree no. with that assessment? Do you think that's around the first couple months of basketball is when you kind of figure it out, and by then you can kind of establish an identity? Yeah, I, I you know you can't can't not disagree with that. I mean, they've been around the block. They've uh. They understand how this goes. But, yeah, I, I, it takes time. You know, it takes time. It definitely takes time. We understand that. Uh, you know, but, you know, in this, in this, uh, in the business we, we're in, everybody wants now, 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 now wins, now success, now this, now that, now, 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 you know. So, I mean, it, you know, it's it's a part of the process, you know. You, you guys in Philly, y'all understand, you know, trust the process. <laughs> yeah, dude. And the process has taken us on a journey. Sometimes <laughs> the process is like a roller coaster where, like, you, you feel like you didn't even sign up to be on it because the Sixers <sighs> missed a couple games. And, B, people have all kind of crazy stuff to say about him, but it's like, calm down. We're, we're playing for April. We're playing yeah. for May. That's, the, that's what we should have our minds on. And I feel like the Lakers are the same way. And young guys are blossoming on the team. Lonnie Walker is obviously putting up a bunch of points. But also Troy Brown in the starting lineup. I, I think that that has been a welcome addition. He adds a little bit of size and some defense to that starting lineup. Yeah, and rebounding also. Another guy that can get in the wing, uh, that can push it. Um, you know, knows you know he knows how to play basketball. He's not out there trying to, you know, be something he's not. So, uh, yeah, he's been a good addition to the lineup and helps helps a lot, you know.